Okay, so before we move to mutations and creating and editing and deleting, let's see first another scenario of fetching. So currently we just have uh, one API endpoint that we call and give us all the list of to-dos, okay? Now let's say the scenario where you don't have this. Let's, um, let's say for example, you just have a list of IDs, okay? Then you have to map through those IDs and every time you map through an item, you have to make an API call to get that item back, okay? So you tell me, okay, how that can happen? Well, there are lots of scenarios in real time. This is just a simple example to demonstrate how to do it. You can, for example, have a list of, um, for example, posts. And for each post, you have to get comments and so on. There are many other scenarios and in real time you need this functionality. So how we can do that, it's very simple. There is something else in React queries. Uh, it's called use queries, not only use query. And First thing, I'll just duplicate this component. So I'll just go here and copy this one and paste it. Okay, and I'll say rename to do list queries. And I'll just close this one, I'll open this one. So we edit this file now. Okay, so you have the two for you to play with them. I'll go back to my app dot js and i'll just get that one queries there and there let's hard refresh and that's still working so how we can do that let's go to our component so let me create um let me create an array with ids const ids just some more one two three four then let's just go clean up all these things we don't need them now remove this also let me comment this for now we don't need it at the moment okay let's import something called use queries and we can come back here it's a const we create an object okay that will hold for us the queries so use queries now this use queries accept an object, and this object accept one property called queries. And inside this queries now, it is um, to be a mapping function. So IDs for for us for now dot map, okay. And we say okay for each ID, I want to return an object, okay. And this object will be basically the same thing we did for the use query itself, okay? So you'll have the query key, okay? And remember this query key have to be unique. And this time we'll pass an array and I'll explain you why. And again, you have to give it um, a special name. So I'll just call it uh, to do, because I know it's only to do. And here I forgot something equal sign. And this one there, okay. So query key is to do, and then we need again the query fn, same query uh, fn. And this query fn, what we'll do, we'll just uh, get an API call and pass it the ID. Okay, so I'll just paste it here. So all I'm doing, I'm just going to this API endpoint, um, and shouldn't be post, should be to do's, slash ID, okay. Then I'm just getting back the response and format to JSON because I'm just using fetch, not Axios. Now, I'm having this, I'll just copy. I'll paste this here, I'll console log it and see what we are getting. Okay, let me hard refresh. And you can see we're getting four items back, okay? And if you open this one, we have here again to do, but we're only having one to do showing up, okay? And problem here is that our function here, the query, is dependent also in some parameter, okay? It's dependent on some argument. And this argument is ID, okay? So basically, if you're calling here any function that have arguments, okay? You need to pass those arguments or parameters to your query key array as well. But they'll be added as just variables, okay? So I'll put ID here. Save. Now hard refresh, and you can see that. Uh, let me close that. Cancel log. Let me hard refresh. So you can see I have now all of them. One, two, three, four. If I click each one of them, I can see the details um, for me in there. Okay. Now if I click the third one, same thing. If I click on second one, 
same thing okay and they're all working as expected they're all stale they are not pending or paused or anything like that now if you go back to our cancel log and see what is the format we're getting so we're getting back an array basically and that array it is an array of data and that data will have the details we need for each one okay so now we have this uh, response we have coming in the queries okay but this will be too difficult to map through how we can then get uh, for example a response which can also have for example status if it's pending or loading and also one object that can hold for us the actual details of our each query okay so this one definitely it will be difficult to go through and look through it and display it in our uh, ui well use queries as it have a queries um property it has something uh, combined and that's one basically it will help us to get a combined data back okay so how we can do that so first thing this combine okay it will be our function by default it will take a parameter called results and this results will be results of your queries call itself okay then this function we can do whatever we want so what i want at the one moment i want to return return i want to access for example my data okay and that will be from results that we get from the call queries above and then i'll map through it okay then i will say for each result for each result give me back only the result dot data okay so all my data for each and every query we're getting called for one two three four whatever that we have they will all be combined and returned into one single uh, property within an object same thing we can do for example for pending so to know if any query is pending so we can do pending and same thing with the results and we do map okay not map actually this time we do sum and we say okay for each result check that result is pending and you can see here when i do dot i can get all the other things uh like it's error of it's loading or it's paused so you can do whatever you want okay so on this example i'm just using two so it's pending i'm accessing two details okay now i'm keeping same my queries here log okay and you'll see the difference let's save i'll just hard refresh and now this is much prettier okay so you can see here i have four logs because we have four uh features going be behind for api calls okay one two three four so when we run the first two two times it's still saying pending because the system api is pending but the time to run to the third and fourth it's already finished okay so there's nothing pending so and if you open it you have your data and pending is false okay so basically you can come here and depending you enter your all apis uh, are done you can say for example if uh, queries is pending okay then you can say for example loading okay, return div loading okay otherwise you just render your uh, data itself and here it will be much easier for us not to map through it and render it not like before if you remember you're trying to e access each and every api return itself okay now i can just go here and comment and now we have not data but we have the queries queries dot data and then now map through it okay so if i save this i should have my list successfully showing on my screen so this really can be really really helpful and you see as much you have a um, list of APS to do, like here I just put four items, you can have anonymous number of items you want to do this, okay? So you don't have to track for each and every one, what is the status it's pending, if it is successful, if it's error, you don't have to do that. Before we end up this video, let's take a quick look to our 10 stack dev tool. So you can see here because we have four queries here, four calls, so we have them all listed here as well. And you can see the query keys we give right there to do and the id number also see them there okay so and all of them they are still means nothing is happening at the moment because we already fetched them and we're not doing anything with them at the moment they're just sitting right there and if you click each of them you'll see the details are coming also right there for us okay so 
this is for today video what i will do i was thinking i will move to mutation as next but i guess let's do some little bit more things i want you to get hands on unit tests as well so we'll do unit tests for this example and also the one we built it before which was just calling um using the use query but not use queries so let's see you in the next video if you're not interested in unit tests so just skip the next two videos coming through and just move on to the mutation directly